I've always felt, I mean, people sort of colloquially say, if you can see it, you can be it, which I think has some validity to it. But there is something about sort of, I, I do think there is a tremendous amount of pride in seeing someone who's kind of like you, whether it's yeah. I'm from Long Island, they're from Long Island, uh, they're uh, Afro-Latino and I'm Afro, you know, whatever. Uh, I do think there is some sort of connective tissue that at the very least you feel camaraderie with someone, maybe at the, at the most you feel like, wow, this has paved a path that I could then take. Um, have, have you felt that way? Yes, and, and, and I often hear stories of people who have been inspired by my example. Um, you know, there are communities that have felt historically alienated from the political process, and there are young Latinos of color, Blacks of um, LGBTQ African Americans, LGBTQ Latinos, or LGBTQ youth in general who see themselves in me, who see themselves in, elect in their elected leadership and who feel inspired to become politically engaged or to run for public office. Uh, but for me, especially as a gay man, you know, visibility is, is a matter of not only of pride, but, but life and death. Um, you know, I'm reminded of the AIDS crisis when the LGBTQ community was far less visible than it is now. Ronald Reagan, the president of the United States, went six years without even uttering the word AIDS, without even acknowledging mass suffering and deaths among LGBTQ people who were dying at the hands of an infectious disease. And for me, the lesson learned from the AIDS crisis is that when a community is invisible, when people cannot see your humanity, the end results can be the kind of mass deep suffering that we saw during the AIDS crisis. 